morning, if you don't know, Disney had a press conference that released a lot of really cool information for stuff that's going to be released, um, opening up, kind of this summer. So if I would sit down and talk to you guys, kind of give you a basic overall idea. And then if you want to read more, you can go to the Disney Parks blog, which I will link down below for you guys. So let's get started. So first and foremost, I'm going to be starting with Hollywood Studios. Now, we still don't have a new name for it. Supposedly, uh, the name of the park is expected to change, but we don't know when. So that's one thing that has not been announced as of yet of the new name for Disney Hollywood Studios or MGM, depending on what you call it or what you know it by. There will be a new fireworks show for Star Wars that will show up in June. There's already a Star Wars fireworks show, but apparently the one that's coming in June is going to be a lot more elaborate, and um, we really don't know much outside of that. Is that it's just going to have a lot more effects, pyrotechnics, um, I mean, more pyrotechnics because it's already a fireworks show. Um, <laughs> but there's just the idea that there's going to be more um, substance to the fireworks show. It's going to become more of a spectacle that you're going to want to go see um, whenever you go. So there's that. They are still keeping Phantasmic. It's not replacing Phantasmic as a lot of people have been concerned. No worries, Phantasmic is not going anywhere. Uh, next, dealing with Star Wars is the kind of mini announcement about Star Wars land that there is going to be a ride of the Millennium Falcon where you are the pilot. We really don't know much outside of that. We're kind of speculating that it might be somewhere between a mission space and Star Tours kind of experience mixed together. But like I said, we really don't know. All we know is that you're going to sit in the cockpit and you're going to pilot the Millennium Falcon. Now moving on to Toy Story Land, which is the second part of the expansion at Disney Hollywood Studios. First and foremost, the new uh, long-awaited track for uh, Toy Story Mania, the, th the third track, will be opening up uh, as of Memorial Day. So that's exciting. You know, hopefully it will cut down some wait times and lines and all those kind of fun things because goodness knows waiting three hours for Toy Story Mania is not how you want to spend your day at Hollywood Studios. Next for Toy Story Land, there are two um, ride uh, information. One that we already kind of knew of was the Slinky ride and you can actually go to Disney Parks blog and actually see a concept video of what it's going to be like and what the general idea of it is, is that Andy has gotten this new toy, this roller coaster um, builder set and he builds it all across the yard and he uses you know like bits and pieces from his toy room and his toy box and kind of just throws it all together to um, show the imagination of Andy, which is really exciting. You're going to be able to ride in um, Slinky's little rings. And um, yeah, it sounds great and it sounds super exciting. I'm super excited that they're bringing a new roller coaster, um, a, kind of, a steel roller coaster. That That's what it looks like from the video that they've shown. Um, but yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited. I can't wait to be able to see how it turns out. So next we're going to talk about is the Alien Saucer ride. Now this one is kind of more of like those little carnival rides that you've seen at Toy Story, or not Toy Story, sorry, Cars Land. And also I like I think it's like a bit of a carnival ride there um, or something similar and then also kind of similar to the Mad Tea Party in Magic Kingdom and I kind of think it's going to be thrown together with the Toy Story Alien, uh, the Claw, kind of theme so that'll be exciting to see too i really hope that it is a bit different than just you know the mad tea party uh spinning teacups with like alien theme but i mean either way it's going to still be fun but i just kind of am hoping that there's going to be a little bit more to it than just the mad tea party the next park that we are moving to about information that we've been given is Epcot, one of my absolute favorites. So first and foremost, the new Soaring Experience will open up June 17th, so that's super exciting that um, it's coming a little bit earlier than they originally said it was. So 
yay we're gonna be there to be able to experience it so that'll be a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to it um, also uh, t finding Dory characters will be found at um, Turtle Talk with Crush, which is great because I've kind of noticed um, the more, like the past two times we've gone to Disney and have done the Turtle Talk with Crush, it's kind of getting repetitive and kind of getting stale. So I'm really excited to be able to see what the new characters add a new dynamic to the Turtle Talk with Crush, especially after being able to see the movie and being able to, you know, really relate to these characters. Also, another really exciting announcement is that the new Frozen Ever After ride slash Frozen Land, I use the word land loosely because it's not really Frozen Land, but um, in Epcot they're doing an expansion or a reimagining of the Norway Pavilion and they have replaced Maelstrom and have added a new ride that is Frozen themed. It's called Frozen Ever After. And what we know about it is so far is that the original cast from the movies will all be doing the voices for In the Ride. We also know that the boats have arrived. They're at the ride and they're starting testing there but also we know that the storyline is that it's the winter summer celebration where Elsa turns Arendelle from summer into winter so that they kind of have a frozen um, play ground kind of thing like you see something similar at the end of the very first movie where Elsa kind of turns the courtyard of their castle into a skating rink. So I'm thinking it might have something to do with that. That might have became a big tradition in their culture after, you know, we've seen the movie. Okay, so next we're moving on to Animal Kingdom. Now, Animal Kingdom has been having some issues when it comes to the Rivers of Light show. We were expecting for it to open April 22nd, Earth Day, um, but then it got postponed indefinitely, which is kind of scary because they put a lot of effort and they were really at the end getting ready to launch it, and we found out that it's being postponed indefinitely. And as of right now, they have a new show that is getting ready to debut for Memorial Day. And it is based off the new Jungle Book movie. Um, so that's a little worrisome, the fact that they've completely changed course, changed ways, and now we're getting a Jungle Book show whenever we really were expecting the Rivers of Light. Um, so that's really disappointing and really sad because we were getting really hyped up for the new show, but hopefully that um, it will be coming soon um, and hopefully they'll still be able to release it and hopefully that the Jungle Book show isn't a disappointment compared to what we were expecting for uh, Rivers of Light. So also with, you know, this new nighttime spectacular show that's going to be at the Animal Kingdom, um, Animal Kingdom night uh, or extended hours they're, when they're beginning their turnover from just a daytime park to an all-day park starts April 22nd, Earth Day, which we kind of had already expected. Um, so it's going to be really exciting to be able to see um, all the different experiences in Animal Kingdom at night so we're gonna be able to go on the um, we're gonna be able to go on the safari at night and we're gonna be able to see the tree of life at night and we're gonna be able to ride Everest at night and just see everything lit up it's gonna be really fantastic and it's gonna be a really great experience also a new restaurant is opening up it is a table service for lunch and dinner and it's called Tiffin's I believe I'm saying that right Tiffin's restaurant and what the word Tiffin means is lunchbox so I think that's really cool. It's based off of Imagineers for Animal Kingdom along their journeys, where they've gone and kind of thrown like their own experiences into a restaurant, which I think will be really, really cool. So the restaurant is being compared to a gallery where you're gonna be able to see a whole bunch of art pieces and just really cool eclectic kind of things from all around the world and each room is themed differently for different places around the world. So I think it'd be a really great experience. You do have to make reservations, but apparently there's a bar attached that you don't have to make reservations for. You can walk in, kind of have some hors d'oeuvres and appetizers and kind of like a light version of their menu and um, yeah, enjoy and go about your day. So it's really cool that you do have the option that maybe if you don't want to eat lunch or dinner there, you can still stop in enjoy a bit of the experience and enjoy the environment and go about your day. 
So next we're going to talk about the most magical park and that is Magic Kingdom. Um, really there's not a whole lot going on there. The only two big announcements there is that for the new show in front of um, Cinderella's Castle, it's called Mickey's, I have to look it up, Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair, there we go, um, will be debuting in June, so that's really exciting that the new show will be coming up. I know the previous show has recently ended and been discontinued, and now they are working on the new show, which we'll see in June. So the next thing that we found out about Magic Kingdom is that there is going to be a new Disney princess kind of thing in town. We have Elena of Avalor, I think is how you say it. Um, she is going to be debuting at the Magic Kingdom with a princess experience. She's a Disney Channel um, princess that apparently will be having a show uh, later on in the year, I believe. So that's going to be exciting. She's based off of diverse Latin culture, so it'll be fun to kind of see what she's like, how she's different from all the other princesses, and kind of just, I, I, I love whenever there's something different about pr the princesses. So like Tiana, she was very feisty and she was very, you know, soulful and she's just, she's such a fun character experience to meet. And I'm also going to be really excited to see if this character is going to be a face character or not. Um, so I think that'll be a really fun to experience as well. So kind of final, ending it off with Disney Springs, there's going to be 30 new shops opening up in Disney Springs this summer, which is crazy. They are expanding it like mad. And I'm so excited to be able to go in and kind of like experience new little shops that I haven't seen before or new little boutiques that I can't get where I live. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun to see these new shops and see these new things and also more places for me to buy Disney merchandise. So I mean... Can't, can't beat it. Also, just another kind of thing that we already sort of knew, but not really. Um, it's been confirmed that Disney Shanghai will be opening up June 17th. So that is coming up very, very soon, and it's going to be really exciting to kind of see what the new Disney park has to bring and what maybe stuff that we might get from there and here. So I'm looking forward to all of this, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this kind of like broad kind of review of everything that's going on and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys!